Hey guys, I hope you're doing well on this warm and toasty day. Today we are sitting at 10 degrees right now, right outside my house, and inside it's warm and toasty. We got the wood stove going, and everything is great here. I hope you guys are having a great Monday. Hey, it's still the beginning of the year of 2024, and we're going to think through the really the whole process of setting and getting to goals. And instead of thinking about setting goals, I just want to talk about some of the ground level things that get you to goals. So if you have a goal, how do you get there? We're going to talk about diligence today or discipline, and I want to help you focus your discipline this year, challenge you to be practically holy in your physical body and spiritually as well. So I want to encourage you in spiritual health and physical health, and I hope uh, to be able to do that here today. Let's go ahead and pray and ask for the Lord's help, and let's get after it. Father, we thank you for this day. We ask for blessing upon this time. I pray for everyone listening that this would be a year of spiritual growth where they love you more, they appreciate your grace more, they obey you more, love your word more, and all the things that, that go with spiritual growth. And also, God, I pray for physical health as well. I pray that you would help them to be physically strong. I pray for the men that they would get stronger, that they would have healthy habits in their life that help them to be able to provide and protect for their families in the way that you've called them to do that. And for the ladies listening in, that they would be healthy physically as well, and that they would pursue uh, physical health as well as spiritual health. And God, just help us during this time. I trust you're going to. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. I want to encourage you to focus your discipline. And let me explain what I mean by that. I think every man is disciplined in their life. Every single man is diligent. This would apply to ladies as well. Every human being has some level of diligence because we are created after the image of God, created in the image of God, and we are given this dominion mandate within us. There is some sort of drive. It's either guided by truth or guided by our passions through self-denial or self-indulgence. We are using and expending energy somewhere. We are driven people. That's what it means to be a part of mankind. We work with our hands or work with our mind, and we have this drive to build, to make things, to do what God's called us to do, or to do what we want to do. So let me explain it like this. You are going to be diligent. You are going to be disciplined. It just matters if your diligence and your discipline is aimed at or revealed by virtues or vices. So either a virtue or a vice is going to re reveal the way in which you are disciplined. Everyone is disciplined. It's inevitable. You can't not be disciplined. The lazy man is disciplined with his laziness. He lives his life around slothfulness. He designs his life around slothfulness. What he does and doesn't do, he guards and protects and fights for his standard of living, that self-indulgence. This is uh, what's what marks the difference between a good man and a bad man, or a, a godly Christian man and a, a non-godly man, is what we do with our passions. Do you indulge your passions, or you do you deny your passions? This is a critical thing as we're thinking about, just looking down the barrel of 2024, are your vices going to get you, your passions going to get you, are they going to subdue you, or are you going to subdue your passions? Because it's going to be one or the other. You are going to be diligent, you are going to be disciplined. But my challenge to you today, my charge to you today is to focus that discipline in a proper way. So let's just think about Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing. There's this passion there, but nothing, the fruit of this passion, the fruit of this cra craving is nothing. While the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. The soul of the diligent is richly supplied. The diligent man is not driven by his passions. He controls his passions. He's not subdued by them. He subdues them. You guys get the point, right? So everyone is disciplined. Everyone has this drive. It just matters if it's going to be expended, if it's going to be exhausted on the vice of the virtue. Okay, so think about physical and spiritual growth this year or physical and spiritual health. So you're thinking about goals. I set my goals this year. So I've got a goal set, a physical growth and spiritual growth. And also has some, some uh, goals for the family as well. Things that I'm thinking through and working through, Ransom starts his mission quest this year, and so there's going to be things that I have for him that are set in place that are goals for him. But you set the goal, and sometimes a goal can be like a mountaintop. In fact, Michael Foster has a really good series right now. He was just talking about this. I think I was listening to an episode today where he was talking about this, actually. And he's got the This Is Foster pod podcast going. I want to encourage you to check that out. He's doing a great job with that. Some of it is repackaged material from It's Good to Be a Man, but you know, as Foster does, he, he says things in such a wise and fatherly way, even though we're kind of the same age, but he almost anyways, and he is just uh, doing a really good, great job. So go check that out. Side plug here. So Foster, thank you. Uh, but back to what I'm talking about here. 
the the goal can sometimes be terrifying. So you, you see it up there and you're like, man, but how do I get there? What's the goal for today? What's the goals to meet the goals? And and so what I want to really focus on is here are the goals to meet the goals. How do you get there? And it just is the daily grind. It's the daily grind of denying yourself and going toward that which is right. And when you're setting a goal, you're setting something that should be in the category of holy, in the category of godly. You're pursuing godliness in both the physical and spiritual realm. Therefore, the goals to get there, there's there's just smaller doses of holiness to get to this these holiness goals, now these holiness goals. But don't look at the mountain, look at what's in front of you. This is every single recovery program talks about just one day at a time, win one day at a time. And if you need to break it down, win one minute at a time, one instead of one soft choice at a time, make one difficult choice at a time and deny yourself one choice at a time. And then look what ends up happening over time. So you look back over a month of living day by day or minute by minute, and you look what God has done. That's how it works. Focus your discipline. Now let's think about three areas that you can focus your discipline and, and get these goals that get you to your goals. So my goals physically this year are to bench press 230. And I want to deadlift 350. And I think the deadlifting, I might end up blowing through that because I think I can deadlift right now about 320, which is double my weight or maybe a little bit more. And I want to bench press 230. The goal is to get there then. Going out this morning, I went this morning, it was like four degrees out or one degree and you go to the gym and it's at my buddy Tyler's house and there's no heat there. And you just go and you work out. You put your gloves on and you work out. This is the the the, the decision where I'm trying to, the, the passion, the self-denial that has to happen is I don't want to go there. It's cold, but I do want to go there, go there because I, I don't want to make this soft decision. Well, it's cold outside. Big whoop. That's, that's not what you run toward, the soft decision. You go th- to the hard decision, the difficult decision, and you do that. And then over time, if you make those decisions, then my hope is, is that I'll be able to hit those goals because I'm I'm hitting these smaller goals. I'm getting up and making that difficult decision. Uh, later tonight, I'm going to be chopping firewood outside because I, one of the things, <laughs> it's cold outside. I told Jordan this morning, the only thing better about working outside when it's 10 degrees is working outside if it was negative 20 degrees. So I'm going to go and get my boys and we're going to go out and I want their fingers to hurt. I want their hands to hurt. I want their face to hurt. I want them to experience the pain of the cold and I want them to experience working in the cold. That's good for them. I want that for them. And in pastoral ministry, I have to pursue that kind of work for my sons or they won't have it. And so that's what we're going to be doing tonight. It's it's a, a decision that helps me to get to these goals. So physical, spiritual health goals. What are yours? What do you want this year? At the end of this year, I want to be a more godly man. I want to be physically stronger and I want to be spiritually stronger. I want my reading game to be back on track this year. My reading last year, the last two years really have has slid down where I used to, I've, I've averaged over the last 10 or 11 years, uh, about 10 more books than what I read the last two years. So the last two years, I've read about the exact same uh, number of books, but it's about 10 less than normal. So I want to get back into my normal range of reading over the last you know 12 years or so now. I want that to happen, but not just the reading. I want the application of the reading. I want it to be transformative. I want to be better this year spiritually at self-denial in all areas of life, as a husband, as a father, as a pastor, as a, just a worker in general with, with life. I want to do better at, at application. I want to obey Jesus more. And to do that, to be physically strong and physically healthy and to be spiritually strong and spiritually healthy, then it's going to require difficult things. I don't know if you know this or not, but self-denial is hard and it requires mental fortitude. It requires the Holy Spirit helping you and encouraging you and then you obeying and falling in line with God's revealed will, doing what God's called you to do when you don't feel like it, when you feel like make a decision based on your vice rather than pursuing the virtue. And so you you that discipline that you already have, that you are expressing somewhere in your life, the challenge and the encouragement this year that I have for you is focus it. Focus that discipline. Focus that diligence on the things that matter. Don't let your passions own you. Own your passions. Don't let your passions drive you. Drive your passions away and do what God's called you to do. I think there's an exciting year ahead of us. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in my life. Look forward to what God is going to do in your life. And hopefully, as we're thinking through this, the first of the month, what, what this next year is going to be, uh, we can make those small decisions that end up uh, reaping good fruit. That's the hope. That's the desire for the sake of our families, for the sake of our church, for the sake of the people that are around us that love us and that we love. Be the best men that we can be. Ladies, be the best lady that you can be. Don't settle for where you are. 
push on, move forward, endure, do what God's called you to do. You are a good soldier after all. So act like it, live like it. Guys, thanks so much for listening. I hope this has been helpful. Please leave a rating and review. I always say that, right? But I guess I do want you to do that. <laughs> I want you to spread the word. Please share this if these things have been helpful. And uh, go subscribe to uh, This is Foster. If you've not yet subscribed to that, it's quite helpful. Thanks, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day.